Crowley Jefferson's Awesome Friendly Adventure by Jeff Kinney. Chapter 1 Once upon a time, in a land far away, there lived a boy named Roland, and Roland was a very good boy. Back then, School hadn't been invented yet, so most kids worked on their family farms all day. But Roland's parents thought it was important for their son to get an education and to learn to play an instrument. So he spent his days inside, reading books and practicing the flute. Roland didn't like practicing the flute very much, but he never complained because he wanted to be a good son. It was a dangerous time when ogres and giants roamed the land, so Roland's parents liked him to stay indoors where it was safe, especially after dark. Time to come inside now, Roland. Roland had never even been outside his village. He wished he could go on adventures like his grandpa Bampy the Brave, who used to fight monsters and search for treasure. But Bampy was never the same after he got back from his adventures. And Roland knew that was because Bampy didn't always wear his helmet and he got hit on the head a few too many times. Bampy! Roland promised his parents that if he went on an adventure, he'd always wear a helmet and he'd make good choices. But they said he'd be much safer staying at home and practicing his flute. So the only thing Roland could do was read stories about Bampy and imagine what it would be like to have adventures of his own. Sometimes after Roland read about the monsters in Bampy's stories, He'd get kind of scared and then he'd have to sleep in his parents' bed for a few nights. But his parents probably didn't mind because they loved him very much. Most of the time, Roland's dad worked from home, but once or twice a month, he'd go on a business trip to another village and Roland's dad would always say the same thing when he left. Look after your mother, son. Right about now, you're probably thinking, so far this is a pretty boring book. But just wait, because in a second, it's about to get really good. This one morning, when Roland's dad was on one of his trips, Something totally crazy happened. Roland woke up early to practice his flute, but then it got really cold in his room. And when he looked out the window, he couldn't believe it was snowing. Oh yeah, I probably should have mentioned that this was the middle of the summer because then you'd be even more amazed. Roland ran down to the kitchen to tell his mom about the snow, but he couldn't find her anywhere. So Roland went outside to ask his neighbor, Mrs. Nettles, where his mom was because Mrs. Nettles was pretty nosy and she always knew everybody's business. But that's when Roland got some really bad news. Mrs. Nettle said the white warlock came to the village and kidnapped Roland's mom. And he took her to his ice fortress where he is keeping her as his prisoner. 
Now Roland was totally freaked out. You're probably thinking, well, why didn't Roland just call his dad? But guess what? Phones weren't invented yet, so he couldn't. Plus, if Roland mailed his dad a letter to tell him what happened, it won't get to him for a long time because back then, the mail took forever. Roland was worried about his mom, but he was also worried what his dad was going to say when he got home from his trip. I am very disappointed in you, son. Roland decided the only thing he could do was travel to the ice fortress and rescue his mom on his own. But Roland knew the journey was going to be dangerous, so he went down to the basement and got Bampy's old armor out of a musty chest. And even though Roland was a little nervous about monsters and sad about his mom getting kidnapped, he was also excited because he was about to go on his first adventure. After I wrote the first chapter of my book, I showed it to my mom who said she was proud of me for using my imagination. Then she said she couldn't wait to find out what happens next. I haven't shown it to my dad yet because I want to finish it first. And when I'm done, I'm going to ask him to read it to me as my bedtime story. But I'll pretend I don't know what's going to happen, so it'll still be special. I was pretty excited to show the book to my best friend Greg Heffley because he likes stories with dragons and wizards and that kind of stuff and I figured he'd think it was pretty awesome. But I can't really tell if he liked it or not because at first he didn't say much. Hmm... I asked Greg what he thought of the story so far and he asked me if I wanted his honest opinion or if he should tell me what I wanted to hear. And I said I wanted his honest opinion. But Greg reminded me that the last time I asked for his honest opinion, it got him in trouble. That was the time I showed him my tap dancing routine after taking my first lesson. Tappity, 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 poomp. Greg told me he thought it was terrible and that hurt my feelings. So I told his mom what he said and she wasn't happy. Greg said if he told me his honest opinion about my book and it hurt my feelings. I wasn't allowed to go running to his mom. So I said okay and we did a pinky swear. After that was settled, Greg told me all the things that were wrong with my story. And boy, he had a lot to say. The first thing he said is that I can't start the book with Once Upon a Time because that's corny and it makes it sound like a fairy tale. And that kind of hurt my feelings right away because it's supposed to be a fairy tale. Then Greg said, no offense, but this Roland character has got a lot of problems and the biggest one is his hair. He said Roland has a mullet which is the worst type of haircut a person can have. I said the reason Roland's hair is long in the back is so he'll look cool when he does action stuff. Gallop, gallop. And Greg said maybe Roland can get a haircut 
at the beginning of chapter two. Then Greg said no offense, but Roland kind of seems like a baby, and it's not really believable that a kid his age would sleep in his parents' bed. And that made me feel a little ashamed because sometimes I sleep in my parents' bed, especially on nights when there's a really bad thunderstorm. Crash! Greg taught me a long time ago that if you say no offense, then the other person isn't allowed to have hurt feelings about what you say. After it, but I think that only works with kids because one time I tried it on my dad, and he got mad. No offense, but your breath stinks. Greg said the book was gonna be too boring if it was only about Roland, and that he needed a sidekick. I said maybe Roland could have a best friend. He goes with him, and his name could be Greg Heffley. But he told me everything about his life is copyright Greg Heffley, and if I used his name, I'd have to pay him money. So I decided to make up a different sidekick for Roland because I don't want any trouble with Greg. Greg said he didn't know. If he could read a book about a boy who has to rescue his mom, because that's a little too weird, so I said maybe I could switch out Roland's mom for a princess, and Roland could rescue her instead. But Greg said nowadays princesses are tough and know how to fight, so they don't need some guy to rescue them. He said, "If I wrote a book about a helpless princess who needs to be saved by some dude, then I'm gonna get a ton of angry letters." Well, that got me kind of worried because I don't wanna get a bunch of angry letters. But Greg said I could put my publisher's address on the back of the book. And then all the angry letters would go to them. I said I was just writing the book for myself, and that I wasn't really trying to get it published. But Greg said if I was going to do all this work, I might as well try to cash in. He said that if my book gets published. I have to think about movies and toys and T-shirts and swimwear and all sorts of other stuff too, and that sounded complicated. Then Greg said he'd make me a deal. He said I could focus on the writing and he'd handle everything else. Then we'd split all the profits fifty-fifty. I was excited because that meant me and Greg were gonna be partners. So we did another pinky swear to make it official. Chapter two. Even though Roland felt pretty brave wearing Bampy's armor, he was still kind of scared to leave his village all by himself. So Roland went to see if his friend Gorg the Barbarian wanted to come with him. Roland met Gorg when they were both little kids, and ever since then they have been best friends. Since Gorg was a barbarian, he was always using his muscles to smash things. And that's why Roland's parents didn't let Gorg come to their house for sleepovers. Gorg's parents didn't make him read books or play the flute, so mostly Gorg just worked out in his garage, and sometimes Roland worked out with him. 
Since Gorg didn't read a lot of books, he didn't know that many words. But Roland always understood him anyway. Gorg hungry, Gorg happy. Roland told Gorg that the white warlock kidnapped his mom and that he needed some help rescuing her. And Gorg didn't even ask his parents for permission to go because they never really cared what he did anyway. But before Roland and Gorg could leave for their trip, they needed to go to the village shop and get some supplies. Roland used his allowance to buy a bunch of food and torches and camping stuff. Then Gorg picked out some things he wanted to bring on the trip. Roland asked Gorg to chip in, but as usual, Gorg didn't have any money. The guy at the shop said Gorg was going to need some armor if they were going on a dangerous journey. But Roland explained that Gorg doesn't wear a lot of clothes because he likes to show off his muscles. Roland used his lost gold coins to pay for a map of the world outside the village. And even though Roland was nervous about leaving the village that he'd lived in his whole life, he was pretty excited too. As soon as I was done with Chapter Two, I brought it to Greg's house so he could read it. I was a little worried that he wasn't gonna like Roland's best friend, but he thought Gorg was great. Greg said Gorg would make an awesome action figure who could say different phrases when he pressed down on his head. Gorg action figure says three phrases: Gorg happy, Gorg angry. Gorg gassy. I said maybe Roland could be an action figure too, but Greg said no one would buy a Roland toy because he's just a regular kid and he doesn't really do a lot. Peasant action figure with flute. Then I said maybe Roland could be a young wizard. Who has a wand and casts spells? But Greg said I needed to come up with something better because no one would read a book about a boy wizard. Greg said Roland needed to be tough like Gorg. He said boys would like Gorg, but girls would be in love with him, and they'd put Gorg posters in their bedrooms. Then Greg said, when they make the movie, they'll have to bring in bodybuilders and try out for the part of Gorg. I said maybe girls would put posters of Roland up in their bedrooms too, and Greg said, yeah, maybe after Roland hits puberty and gets braces. Greg told me once I finish this book, I should write a prequel where Gorg is a baby, and that way we could sell dolls and make millions of dollars. Baby Gorg, Gorg wet. But what Greg was most excited about was the map. He said it was great that there were a ton. Of different environments, because that meant we could get kids to buy the same action figure a bunch of times. Desert Gorg, Jungle Gorg, Snow Gorg, and Greg said we could sell all sorts of playsets for the action figures because that's where the real money is. Salty Sea playset. He said his only problem with the map is that it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. He said I can't have a desert 
right next to a place that's snowy because that's not the way things work in real life. Plus, he said, there were some things I was gonna have to fix like the river that went in a circle since that's not even physically possible. But I said it was a lazy river and it's magic and I told him my story's fantasy so it doesn't have to make sense anyway. Greg said if this is supposed to be fantasy then I can't have real places on the map like the North Pole. But I told him I put the North Pole on there because I'm hoping Roland and Gorg might get to visit Santa Claus at his workshop. Greg said if I put Santa Claus in the story, he was gonna quit. Then Greg told me he didn't really care what was on the map as long as the next chapters, not just about Gorg and Roland shopping. And I told Greg not to worry, because now the adventure is about to start for real. But hopefully, Roland and Gorg get to meet Santa somewhere on their journey, because that would be pretty cool.